Tough times for New Jersey Republicans? Or is it actually a good time to be in the GOP? Hey, everybody, it's Reporters Roundtable. I'm David Cruz with our panel this week, consisting of Nancy Solomon, senior reporter for WNYC, from Politico and J. Rye Rivard, and Charles Style, columnist for the record, NorthJersey.com. We'll hear from that panel in just a bit, but we begin today with a health check on the state's Republican Party as we head towards important races for U.S. Senate president and next year governor. Our guest is a member of the Republican National Committee. Joining us from Las Vegas, Bill Palatucci. Bill, welcome back to Reporters Roundtable. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. Good morning from, from Vegas, where it's about 7 a.m., so I'll try and stay awake. Listen, I, I appreciate it. Staying awake will be more than most of our viewers do when they, <laughs> when they oh, watch no, us. No, no. No. So what's going on in Vegas? What are you doing over there? This is our annual winter meeting. RNC meets the three times a year officially. And so this is our regularly scheduled winter meeting uh, as you get ready for the presidential year. And so uh, look at uh, uh, the rules uh, upcoming for the convention, uh, what the uh, budget will be for the, for the coming year. So um, those, those are the important matters. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of talk about uh, the race and where things yeah. stand. So o always interesting. Not a whole lot of work gets done um, because we've done a lot of that groundwork ahead of time. But uh, most importantly is the adoption of the, of the uh, RNC's budget for the coming year. Gotcha. Uh, so before we get too far into the state GOP, can, can we do a postmortem on your friend's presidential bid? Uh, Christie dropped out a couple weeks ago. Worth yeah. it? that run and and what does he do now well first of all yeah absolutely worth it i think the governor had had an important message um talking honestly and directly to uh not only republicans but the american public about uh the state of the country and where the former president uh uh left us when he left office and all the crazy things he's been saying and doing since then so i think that was an important um uh, effort by the governor uh, I thought he acquitted himself well, um, talked about um, we have to be honest with ourselves as we look forward and about the important issues facing us in crime and immigration, the, the economy. Um, uh, didn't catch fire with um, re Republicans, but, you know, Trump has that uh, half of that base. Um, yeah. and importantly, too, you know, Trump uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't get on the debate stage and the governor just scared him off, the, off the, any debate stage. He just wouldn't get on there. As yeah. for what's next, um, have no fear. You know, uh, Chris Christie will be, um, you know, out there. He, his voice will be loud and clear talking about those issues that I just mentioned. Uh, he's got a book coming out next week um, that will put him back on the, the speaking circuit and I'm sure back on TV. Um, the governor's, like a lot of us, very concerned about the direction of the country, that, that both parties are dividing the country. And so uh, the governor will be an important, strong voice out there talking about uh, uniting America and moving forward. All right. So election season now, um, you're never going to be a, a Trump guy, I assume. Uh, is he bad for Correct. the country in your mind? Oh, ab absolutely. Um, he has divided this country. Um, he can be, you know, most importantly, he really has contributed uh, to this problem in America. We, we just won't face up the facts. We won't no. talk specifically about the uh, things that we all know. And he lost the 2020 election. He, I think all I can say at best is that 40 of the 44 people who serve in his cabinet will not support him. Um, mm. So don't, uh, don't take my word for it. These are people who are in his cabinet, in the Oval Office, uh, and won't support him. I stand with those folks with big concerns about uh, his conduct and uh, his unwillingness to uh, to face facts when when presented with things that we all know are true. So how about this Senate race that's coming up? Um, are, are you guys going to just not compete? I mean, this is as good a time as any for Republicans in New Jersey to win a Senate seat. You got a, um, you know, a, a, an incumbent who is in trouble um, and then, uh, you know, a, a, a Democratic uh, primary that's going to be bloody. Um, this is the time. No, is the Mendham mayor the best you got? 
Well, listen, a, a number of people who, who are in this race, so it's early on. Yeah, Christine Glasner, give her credit. She got in before yeah. we really knew of, of Menendez's troubles. Um, so wouldn't discount a, an articulate uh, Republican mayor wanting to run. But also Curtis Babshaw, who's a successful uh, businessman from yep. uh, South Jersey. If Out you've ever been week. to Congress Hall, you can see the, the uh, sample of uh, Curtis's handiwork down there. Very well known down in, down in South Jersey. Um, so, yeah, you're right. It, it looks like it's going to be an open seat that Bob Menendez – you know, most likely will not be the nominee yeah. on the Democratic side. So I think uh, as people figure that out and go through the year, they'll get energized and, and, and get uh, get interested. Problem for us is is who will be at the top of our ticket. Um, and if Donald Trump is at the top of our ticket, um, that doesn't bode well, not only for whoever our U.S. Senate candidate yeah. is, but for the rest of the Republican uh Republican candidates down 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 ballot. Um, been really concerned about that as we go into 2024. But but it's early. Let's see how this all sorts out. But we've got a couple of good candidates out there. So uh, give give them, give them time, David. Let let them uh, get their feet, get on the campaign trail, and speak right. for themselves. All right. Uh, looking at this governor's race, I know it's next year, but people are already jumping in. Uh, you got moderates like John Bramnick and Jack Chitterelli occupying sort of the same space. Uh, uh, for in your party, and then you have the right wing. Uh, do the moderates run the risk of of handing the primary over to a right winger who can't win in the general? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, we only have a, a candidate and a half in at this point. John Bramnick is in. John, by the way, had had a great launch, big crowd, great yeah. speech, pulled that off very, very well. Um, we know that Jack Chitterelli will be in soon, but but far as I know, that that's it. Um, and so uh, let's see how that field develops. Listen, that, that's twenty twenty five. That's that that's a year from now before anybody starts voting in, but, in conventions. Um, twenty twenty four is upon us, and I think to your point, though, David, I think what happens this year will have uh, implications and and uh, impacts on, on 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 next year. So before we get ahead of ourselves, I think we got to see how um, twenty twenty four plays out in terms of primaries and the presidential race. Fair enough, uh, but I was leading into a question about your state party, and and whether. Uh, it's the party of Trump uh, or is it still the party of, you know, Tom Kane Sr.? Or is this election cycle and the next one going to really tell the tale about that? Well, I think it depends on which part of the state that you're talking about. That if you're talking about uh, South Jersey, you're talking about Congressman Jeff Van Drew, who's very popular, a very strong incumbent down there. If you're talking about, uh, you know, Central and North Jersey, really North Jersey, you're talking about Congressman Tom, Tom Kane um, and and uh, you know his term in office and and very popular and and a very different part of the state than uh, which than deep which South makes Jersey. sense regionally have, for sure. It makes sense regionally, for sure. I know what you're saying. But overall, sure. if you've got to win a U.S. Senate race or if you've got to win a governor's race, you need, you know, popular vote. Well, the same thing is true on the Democratic side, though, too. Yeah. The Democrats have to uh, talk to people in Cape May and Sussex uh, the way that Republicans got to talk to uh, voters in Middlesex and Union, where, where, where I live. So, listen, New Jersey's always been, you know, that tale of two cities, so to speak. You've got yeah. uh, on either end of the state, um, very, very red counties and very red uh, red places. We, I don't want to don't let me uh, offend Chris Smith there in the, in the center, a big, <laughs> strong Republican um, up and down the, the, the big part of the Jersey shore. So. So, um, but that's always been New Jersey, whether it was a uh, Governor Kane or Congressman Kane, you have to be able to talk to, uh, to, um, uh, voters on, on each side of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, running out of time here. You're doing uh, party business this week. What happened that you guys lost delegates to the national convention? And now a lot of people who wanted to go as delegates can't go as delegates. Somebody's head's got to roll here. No. Well, listen, we're not happy that um, the they had uh, moved up the convention so close to our yeah. uh, primary in uh, in June that we don't have time to um, submit um, uh, certified delegates as elected to, to mm. the uh, national convention in time. I'm not concerned about it. We're going to elect uh, congressional delegates the same way we always had. We'll have full slate of delegates uh, elected by all all a million and a half Republican primary voters. RNC, I don't know what they were trying to do. They're trying to help t Trump or something, but they wanted to have a, a caucus um, um, or something like that and, and, or a convention. And 
uh, our county chairman very smartly said, no, this should be before 105 million Republicans, not some party bosses. So I'm, I'm c- confident at the end of the day, David, we present them, those delegates that we select to the full slate of convention delegates um, when they meet in Milwaukee and they'll seat our, our full convention. Whoever the eventual nominee is, whether it's Trump or Nikki Haley, they will want our full contingent of delegates seated and I'm sure they'll be there. All right, RNC uh, committee member Bill Palacucci, up early for us in Las Vegas. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming on. No problem, David. Thank you for having me. Take care. All right, panel, Nancy, Rye, Charles, welcome to you all. I want to start with this poll um, out this week from FDU on the U.S. Senate race, uh, Democratic primary. It shows Congressman Andy Kim up by 12 points over First Lady Tammy Murphy. Uh, Surprise to you, Nancy? No, not a total surprise. I mean, some of the smaller polls that have come out have shown that uh, he had an advantage over First Lady Tammy Murphy. Yeah. Um, maybe the gap is bigger than I would have expected, so a surprise in that sense. Um, you know, this is this is probably the most interesting political race that we've seen in a very, very long time, and I think it's going to be an exciting six months to the primary. Um, and these, you know, two leading candidates are going to go head to head and it's yeah. it's going to be it's going to be fun. Right. Uh, we keep hearing how uh, Tammy Murphy has all this organization support. Someone pointed out uh, to us this week that this poll evidently wasn't uh, polling committee people. These were actual civilians that they were polling. Yeah, I mean, one way to look at this is it's, a uh, you know, a race of enthusiasm. Uh, for Kim, not that the first lady doesn't have enthusiasm, uh, versus sort of the structural advantage um, that the county party system has. Yeah. So that's going to be obviously one of the most important, important and interesting yeah. elements of this race. Charlie, I'm not sure why Larry Ham wasn't in this poll. He was the the first or the second one in the race, the only black person um, in the race. Uh, his name recognition would have been interesting to measure, no? I would agree. He's he is a um, a veteran presence in New Jersey politics. Yeah. So, and he has uh, made his intentions clear. So, uh, I don't know. I don't want to second guess the methodology. I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I haven't even. You know, I've just got my first yeah. coffee read at the poll. Right. But yes, I think he should have been in there if uh, to be to answer your question. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think his name recognition is is probably higher than Patricia Campos Medina. Um, at this point. And, you know, he certainly could have affected the uh, the percentages of uh, black and brown voters for sure for both of the front runners there. Anyway. All right. Right. Uh, can we talk about this controversy over this article on Tammy Murphy? Uh, Katie Brennan posted about how it glossed over her assault and, and Tammy Murphy's silence about that. Nancy Julie Reginsky also chiming in as well. Yeah, I mean, this has been kind of hanging there over the Murphys now for, what, five, six years? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I I, I don't know. I, I find it hard. I mean, absent an actual, like, charges and a case where evidence is presented, it's hard to know, you know, what's up. I mean, the, the Murphys made a mistake in not, res- you know, responding to her um and stopping this at the you know at the beginning but yeah it's hard to know exactly how this is going to play out in terms of the politics of the situation um you know julie reginsky had a falling out with the campaign uh there was a power struggle there you know and and she has claimed that it was a toxic place for women uh, but others that were involved in the campaign say that this was more about a falling out that she was having with other campaign staff people. So I've never, uh, you know, I, I don't think this is going to be a big problem for the Murphys. Um, but, you know, it it, it it certainly hasn't gone away and it's been yeah. now uh, many years. Right. What did you what did you think of the piece? A lot of people thought that it was. Uh... A, a little bit of a puff piece. I don't know that I thought it was a puff piece. I mean, there were positives and negatives for yeah. 
the first lady for the New Jersey political system, you know, in there, the county party system. I think you could read it and get a pretty good sense of the field. Nothing is totally negative or totally positive. I thought it was a, I thought it laid out the issues well um, for our friends across the Hudson. Particularly for those who write, who, who aren't um, inundated with news about this every day, like folks uh, over on the other side. Uh, good point. Uh, Charlie looks like uh, Brennan and Reginsky are, are going to stay close to this race. Uh, that's going to be bad for the first lady, though, no? Yeah, I, I think they're going to um, you're going to be, I, I agree with you, very vigilant. And um, I think they're going to inject themselves when this race pivots on uh, issues of, of, of affecting women. Uh, because that is going to be a big calling card for Tammy Murphy. Remember, she is going to present herself as as a historical figure, as a potential first uh, female U.S. senator from New Jersey. So they're going to, um, you know, they're going to be a counter this, for that. They're going to use that opportunity to, to to assert that point, those those criticisms. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Nancy, let's talk about our guest after he's left the House. Um, I said a couple weeks ago um, this race needed a John Bramnick in it. Uh, is, is he the guy Republicans didn't know they needed all along? Yeah, I think he is a very dangerous candidate for Democrats. Uh, but the big issue is, can he win the primary with the rising level of conservatism within the Republican Party? Um, you know, that remains to be seen. I mean, you got to love a guy who has billboards advertising that he's the funniest lawyer in New Jersey. Yeah. Um, and he is, you know, he's a good candidate in the sense that he's uh, lively, he's personable, he's funny. Um, and he is a true moderate, and there are so few of them left in New Jersey, in the Republican, in in in, in terms of elected officials in the Republican yeah. Party. So the question is, are there enough Republican moderate voters to get him past the primary? I think if he can get past the primary, uh, he has a very good shot at flipping the state house uh, and putting a Democrat in the governor's office. Yeah, we're seeing totally uh, we're seeing some scenes here of uh, his lunch commercial where the guys are all sitting around playing poker, saying, "Hey, John <laughs> Bramnick's not he's not crazy." <laughs> Is it time, Charlie, to to take uh, uh, John Bramnick seriously? Oh, absolutely. I think Nancy's right. I think he'd be a formidable candidate in the general election. Um, and he also evokes that old school New Jersey, uh, you know, go, uh, style of wanting to be a Jersey guy who his sole ambition is to to uh, uh, to run the state, not to use it as a stepping stone. Right. But, you know, here's a guy came out of the Plainfield City Council. He's now 70 years old. This would be the culmination of a career, not a, a, a midpoint. And um, I, I think he would be formidable. And I think also, let's not discount him in a primary. Yes, Jack Cittarelli is a likely uh, competitor who also aligns himself a little closer to the, uh, the middle, but he has kind of left himself open to being cast as more kind of MAGA light. He, uh, he refuses to absolutely uh, disown himself from Trump, as he yeah. did on your show recently. So I think that that gives him an opportunity to, to make the case that that whole central lane, that moderate lane belongs to me. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Bram. Um, Cittarelli needs to work on his uh, Trump answer for sure. Uh, let me switch gears here a bit. Um, these proposed fair hikes on NJ Transit uh, tolls increasing. Uh, Rye, you had an interesting piece on how this may all come down on Murphy and his, his legacy as the defender of the middle class on a good day. Yeah, I think we're, we're seeing something interesting, which is the governor during, you know, previous six years has been able to, you know, talk about, by and large, tax cuts uh, that affect the working class residents. You know, there was a millionaire's tax, there was a corporate business tax surcharge that went away, but he's been able to talk about tax cuts. But now 
um, you know, whether it's, you know, a sort of coincidence of the federal pandemic relief money for transit systems expiring or decisions that the legislature hasn't dealt with for a while. You're looking at um, a couple of months now or two years ahead, really, where they have to do 15 percent fare hikes, uh, maybe for NJ Transit, where they have to consider, uh, you know, increasing the gas tax, um, where you have legislators, including the president of the Senate, talking about restoring the corporate business tax. And so all of this is sort of going to come to a head in yeah. a very compressed period of time. Um, and it's going to look, I think, like a lot of things, you know, falling on middle class people at once. Yeah. And, you know, right around the time of a gubernatorial uh, election and, um, you know, Democrats haven't had three terms uh, in the front office since, I don't know, 1860 something when Charlie was in grade school at the time. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I, I, sorry. I felt it coming I, a mile away. I, I telecasted. Sorry. So, Charlie, uh, are, were you on the Taylor Swift beat this week? The MAGA conspiracy? Uh, sorry. Is that yeah, a real I, thing? No, I wasn't. That was supposed to be a little blog post that grew a little longer than a blog post. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, I just I found that interesting that uh, we one of the more prominently quoted MAGA uh, mouthpieces for this, uh, some of these conspiracy theories is a, a, a candidate who got 36 percent of the vote in the fourth congressional district here in New Jersey two yeah. years ago. Mike Crispy, who's a real, you know, a bomb thrower. Uh, and so I, I felt that was an opportunity to say, look, this is, yeah, this is, this is wacky. This is cockamamie nonsense, but you know what? And, and this relates to the future governor's race. It relates to the Senate race. We have here in New Jersey, even this, we have a, a, a very red MAGA presence. That's an undercurrent in this, um, state. And it's going to, is it growing? Uh, you think and I, 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 I'm not sure. It's hard to measure, but I, it's definitely there. And, you know, Bill Palatucci said, yes, the state has always had its red districts. I think they've gotten redder and more MAGA. And yeah. so for a candidate like Bramnick and Chitarelli, they're it's going to make it much harder to uh, navigate as they seek the uh, brass ring. Yeah. All right. Time for our only in Jersey segment. Headlines and notes that are quintessentially Jersey. Rye, you got one for us? Yeah, this uh, is a story out of Manville where a woman found some pepperoni just sort of distributed around her property. Um, and it reminds me of the story from last year where there was uh, some pasta found in the woods. Yes. And so I think, uh, you know, just at some point when you're walking through New Jersey, you can put together a, a pretty good spread. Oh, pasta and pepperoni. That is quintessentially Jersey. Uh, Nancy, you got one for us? Not as good as that one, touche, Rye. Um, I thought the New York Magazine article, the quote, of the, this is the article about Tammy Murphy. And yeah. I think, you know, the county line, we haven't talked about it, but it really is quintessentially an only in New Jersey situation where Tammy Murphy has the endorsement of all the party bosses. Hence, she gets the county line on each ballot in the big Democratic counties. Uh, and that's probably what's going to hand her a victory more than any polling indicates. Um, but I thought the quote in the New York Magazine article from an elected official who told the reporter, you know, do I think she's the best candidate? No. Do I think it's a good look for New Jersey? No. If you're asking me, am I going to vote for her? The answer is no. And this apparently is a person who endorsed her. To me, that's that's so New Jersey. Right. Totally. Uh, all right. Mine comes from Atlantic City, where former uh, city council president Craig Calloway was arrested this week on voter fraud charges. Calloway, the uh, politician turned political logistics consultant, let's just call it that, uh, is alleged <laughs> to have harvested vote by mail ballots from individuals in exchange for 30 to 50 bucks, then filling them out, presumably for his candidates slash clients. First of all, I thought Calloway was already in jail. Uh, secondly, the former Democrat was working most recently for Republicans, including Congressman Jeff Van Drew, whose campaign denounced Callaway and his tactics and his tactics this week, despite having paid him sixty five thousand dollars for strategy consulting. That's their words uh, for Van Drew's 2022 congressional campaign. Van Drew got only eight hundred and fifty one VBMs that year 
according to his campaign. That comes out to $77 per ballot. Back in the 1970s in Jersey City, that same ballot would have cost you about five bucks. As the old timers say, inflation. And that's Roundtable for this week. Nancy, Rye, Chaz, good to see you all. Thanks also to Bill Palacucci for joining us. You can follow the show on X at Roundtable NJ and find more content, including full episodes, when you scan the QR code right there on your screen. I'm David Cruz from the entire team here at Gateway Center in downtown Newark. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Major funding for Reporters Roundtable with David Cruz is provided by RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Rowan University, educating New Jersey leaders, partnering with New Jersey businesses, transforming New Jersey's future. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Business Magazine, the magazine of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, reporting to executive and legislative leaders in all 21 counties of the Garden State since 1954. And by Politico's New Jersey Playbook, a topical newsletter on Garden State politics, online at politico.com.